It is the most significant discovery of early human relatives that we've never seen before in the fossil record. We do have our genus. Oh. What these discoveries are telling us is that there's a lot out there to be found. That we actually don't have the whole story of human evolution. I mean, it looks like it might be a fragment of, like, the superorbital torus or something. The Homo naledi fossils are extraordinary in a, a wide variety of ways. We know they have the characters of an early member of the genus Homo. By comparing their morphology to other early hominids, we can see that we would place them right at the base of the lineage that leads to us. We've never seen a non-human that shares so many primitive and yet sometimes advanced characters. Tiny brain, curved fingers, but a generally human-like hand, long legs, and a human foot. We are looking at well over a dozen, in fact, probably around 18 different individuals representing all different age spans from near fetal age to senile individuals who were at the last stages of their lives. When I first saw these images by my exploration team, I knew that we had to act. The Rising Star Cave System is one of the best known in South Africa. It's been caved continuously for more than 50 years. I had this fossil lying on the surface, and I could see that it had been damaged. So I called National Geographic to put together an expedition, fast. Now you get inside. The entrance is very, very difficult. To get to it, you have to move through a seven and a half inch slot, wiggling your way across sharp rocks before you drop into this remarkable little chamber. And the floor is quite literally comprised of parts of the bodies of these human ancestors. Seen that now on the team. Look at this. Whoa! <laughs> Tell them they're a go to collect. Oh. All right. You got the fossil. Huh? It appears, based upon the context, that we have discovered this incredible assemblage of hominid fossils in, is that they were deliberately placed there by their next of kin after death. Homo naledi was doing something that until this moment we thought was unique to modern humans. That is, deliberate disposal of the dead. If this hypothesis holds true, that's an extraordinary thing. What Naledi has taught us is that there is clearly more out there that we didn't know. The discovery of a new species of human ancestor, Homo Naledi, has just been announced. The fossils were found in Rising Star Cave in the Cradle of Humankind World Heritage Site, 50 kilometers northwest of Johannesburg, and the archaeological expeditions were led by Professor Lee Berger. Homo naledi was discovered in 2013 by a team here in the Rising Star System in a chamber that we've named the Dinaledi Chamber, or Chamber of Stars. It is the most significant and extensive discovery of early human relatives of fossils ever made on the continent of Africa. More than 1,550 remains, representing more than 15 individuals from infants to babies to toddlers to tweens, teenagers, young adults, adults, and, and elderly. The species is remarkable. It's got a tiny brain, uh, barely larger than an orange, with small teeth, but that are primitive in shape. Staying across a relatively tall body, maybe a meter and a half tall, in the males at least, females about 1.4, 1.45 meters, skinny, with human-like arms, but an ape-like thorax and chest, with a very primitive pelvis. The hands are a mix between very, very advanced human-like hands, but the fingers are, are curved, like very, very primitive ancient human ancestors. From mid-thigh down, it looks like a human. Long legs, human-like feet. Really a combination that we've never seen before in the fossil record. But the most striking discovery was what Homo naledi might have been doing in the cave. And we've come to the conclusion that this species of non-human hominid 
was deliberately disposing of its dead, taking the dangerous journey into this deep chamber to place its dead or drop its dead into a place inaccessible uh, by any other. Something that prior to this we thought was unique to humans and in fact maybe identified us. Now it doesn't. The fossils, which are as yet undated, will now be on public display. What I'm doing at the moment actually is preparing the fossil material to be moved out to Marapeng, to the museum there. Part of that is in preparation for the scientific announcement, and then the fossil material will actually stay out there for public viewing. What we're going to do is build a representational skeleton for everyone to see, and then we're going to sort of supplement that with some of the other bones that we have that are, are more complete. So it, I think it will look pretty amazing. As we take fossil material that we've excavated, we then scan it using different methods. One method is CT scanning, another method is uh, laser scanning. We then take the 3D files and we print them on our 3D printer. We're printing a skull and mandible, so an almost complete skull, just to give an idea of exactly what this, this animal may have looked like. Printing the skull takes quite a while. At the moment, to print the entire skull, we're looking at 38 hours of print time. The public can come face to face with the new discovery at the Marapeng Visitor Centre at the Cradle of Humankind World Heritage Site. <laughs>